Thank you for not tuning out and welcome back. We are still here at Spy Morning. My name is Ruslan Feli and of course, like I said earlier, Perez Music is in the building. He's been serenading us and I want him to take the floor once again. Ladies and gentlemen, as you sit in your homes, with a round of applause, let's welcome the man himself, Perez Music. Please do take a seat. Thank you. It's, it's time for us to get talking to Perez Music and get to know more about him. How are you? I'm good. How are you too? I'm good. Thank you. And um, Perez, you are taking the ga music, ga gospel music to a whole new level. I'm Let's sure. talk about how it all started. Uh, why you decided to do the ga and not any other um, dialect? Um, so it's not something that I actually set out to do or it wasn't something that I intended to do, but I noticed that it's working. Mm. But... Um, I believe it's because Ga is my, sorry, Ga is my native language, so I tend to express myself more in that aspect. Like any time I try to compose, it's, it's either Ga or English that flows. Mm. I have a few Chi songs, okay. but um, I think because it's my dialect and I speak it often, it's, it flows naturally in that. Oh, your Ga, what's your Ga name? My name is Niokai. Niokai? Yeah. So I had an option of either using Niokai as Paris, because I didn't want to use my real name. My real name is Frank. Okay, Frank Fra Tego. Frank what? Frank Tego. Frank Tego. Yeah, I didn't want to use it. Okay, and you know there's already new kind in the system. Yes, yeah, so I had I had that option. Right. So maybe that's why I went for the Perez because then I think Perez also sounds a bit global. How did Perez come about? Um, Perez is a name I chose for myself because I understood the meaning of it. It means breakthrough. Okay. And it has this whole story about it where twins and the first one was coming out, his hand was pulled back. And he, put, he brought his hand first and they tied it with a red ribbon. They took it back. And then the second one overtook him and came instead of the first one coming. Mm. So the midwives said, this is a breach of birth. And they, they, made, they called him Perez, which means breakthrough. And at, I was at a point in my life where I knew that, Charlie. I had delayed on a lot of things. I mean, places where I was supposed to be, level where I was supposed to be on, or pedestals that I, I was expecting that I would be on, I was, I was delaying. So I needed a breakthrough in my mm. life. And I, I chose the name Perez because I believe that anytime somebody calls me Perez, you're actually, you're actually prophesying a breakthrough for my life. Okay. And yeah, and I believe in the power of names, and it's happening. I mean, I can it see. It is happening I can, I can for see. you. Yeah, uh, you God haven't been, been in the industry for too long. I have been. How long? Um, I've been doing gospel for about seven years, seven to eight years now. Seven to eight years. Yes. Okay, so it's still a baby small. Yeah, but I have been doing music for, for a while. A, a long were while. You, were you a backing vocalist no, for no, no, anybody? No, no, no. Unfortunately, I never got okay. to experience any of those things. But I sing. I sing in church. Okay. I used, I used to sing in church. I do sometimes nowadays, but. I sang, I, I, for like four or five years I was in the church. Mm. Yes, I was leading praise and worship. I was doing background vocals and everything. So most of my, my official church, or my official um, Christian music training came from the church. All right. So I learned from the church. Okay, so you know what? We are talking about folk tales today as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you love folk tales. I, I, I know a few of them. You know a few of I, them. I, 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 Which I, is your favorite? Um, um, a. I didn't prepare to have a film, but I, 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 I know, uh -huh. I know a few of the gun ones. None of them comes to mind readily, but I know a few of them that are actually very good. Okay. Probably when you start playing them, but you like Kukwana Nancy. Yeah. You, when you start, you when I start watching Kukwana and and you know when, when you said yeah, folk, folk tale, I was actually thinking folk music. No, I talk about folk that's, tales. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. and I, I love folk, folk tales. You, yeah, lo I mean. you love it. You were watching by the first time. Yeah, I was. Oh, you're, was. you're young. N I'm not that young. I'm not that young. Okay, so since you're saying you're not that young, I know people at home are wondering, are you single or that's, you're married? I, that's something I don't like to talk about. So you're married? I don't like to talk about. Okay, so we are not talking about you being married. Nope. So how many children, though? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's an aspect of my life for now I like to keep private okay. for a while. Mm. Yeah. Why? Mm. Um, What's the reason? You know, it's me. I want people to focus on me and mm -hmm. on my family. Right. Or not my extended family or my okay. nuclear family or whatever it is. It is me for now. So mm. it's all about me. Let's, at the right time, I mean, if whether I'm married or not, whether I have kids or not, we'll, we'll mm. find out. Mm. But yeah. you know, once you get into the whole, you know, public domain, mm -hmm. we don't have anything like... Well, they should find out. I'm not going to tell them. Okay. Yeah, they can find out if they want, so, but I'm not so going to So if we tell. bring out any bad news or negative news, are you going to defend it? Defend? No, I, not I, at I all. have no comment on no anything comment on when that. it comes to aspect, things like that, so... Have you ever been tempted to do circular music? I was actually a circular producer. Okay. Yeah, I used to produce. I actually, yeah, I wasn't that confident. You know, creative people have a way of, you know, that's why I always say that in this industry, we need a lot of creative managers. Mm -hmm. We need a lot of managers that can manage a lot of these creative artists. 
or this creative art because usually I was looking for a lot of um, what's the name is it affirmation or mm -hmm. yeah from people around me and I didn't get that so I thought I wasn't good enough but it took mm -hmm. me some time to realize that and in fact I think it took it took me coming to Jesus or coming to Christ and knowing that my confidence or my um, affirmation there's a word I'm looking for it's not coming my affirmation okay. is not from man mm -hmm. it is God who gives me the approval and I realized that I do strength from the Holy Spirit I do strength from my fellowship with God so that's where my boldness because I used to be a very shy and a very reserved person you no okay maybe I wasn't shy but I was very reserved okay like I because shyness dear no but I, I used to be really actually yeah I, I can come into a space and it take me some time to warm up to people you okay yes ma uh, no care. <laughs> so now, yeah, I, I'm, I think God has given me something. And okay. where, that's where all this confidence and things is stemmed mm, out from. Mm, yeah. Mm. When you decided to give yourself Yeah, when I decided, God. yeah. How many years have you been born again? I mean, I grew up in a church. Mm. I, but my mom made sure that I knew God, I knew the Holy Spirit and everything. But then, you know, when you get to JSS, my it's mom used to, you know the funny that. thing? I never went to Children's Park. I never did anything that, it, like, children used to do. My mom didn't allow me to go anywhere. I can plan with my friends. She would say, okay, on the last day, she would say, you're not going anywhere. Oh, wow. So when I got to SS, from first year in SS, mm -hmm. I realized that, okay, so I can actually stay away from home. Mm. Okay, and then I started. Okay, so that's where the yeah. small bad boy thing so came inside. You're supposed to vacate on a certain day. You mm -hmm. tell them that you're vacating on a different day so that you come to town, go to your parties, then you come home. And sometimes when I'm, I'm in the house and she's sleeping, I, when, I, when we are going to sleep, I don't lock the back door. I'll leave it open. So when she's sleeping, I'll step out. I'll go and make sure that by 4.30, I'm back. <laughs> so how did it all change? I mean, after doing all these things, I realized that it is not enough. I mean, life, life is... You know, there are people who are guided when they are growing up. They, get, they are able to see both sides of the world, and they have people who tend to do this, don't do this. Mm. Unfortunately for me, I had to figure out a lot of things by myself. Okay. I had to make my mistakes and learn by myself. So at a point, I realized that listen, there's more to life than just going out, chilling, drinking, smoking, having fun and all that. So I set out to look for that higher power. And the best place to go was to go to my beginning, my roots, where my mom um, trained me in. So I remember one day I told them that I was going to go to church with them, and they were very surprised. It was actually Sunday after church. Why, well, you yeah. hadn't been to church with them in, in a while? In a very long time. Like, I hadn't been to church in like five, six years. Wow. Yes, I was out of church like that for a very long time. I wonder how your mom was feeling at that time. She wasn't really happy, but there's nothing she could do it about mm. it because I was an adult. At that time, I was, I was getting to my university years. In fact, from SS, even in secondary became, school, I never went very, to SU. Became very stubborn. No, not stubborn, but I charted my own path. Like, I mean, I charted, like, I was on my own path. I was on my own. I, I never went to SU in school. So God just I, Okay, I like went this. once. So God, God held you and said, you better come back. Yeah. And the funny thing is, when I, was in, when I was in the world doing my own thing, there's always this threshold, you know. I could do, but I couldn't do so much. Mm. Because there's always this um, conviction in me that, listen, you're better than this. This is not where I'm supposed to be. So I could go on and I, like, I'll, I'll, pull, I'll pull the brakes somewhere. Mm. I mean, there are some things that were no-go areas for me. Like uh, what? Um, some of them I can't even mention. Really? Yeah, let's leave it like But you were tempted to do it, but you oh, just course. said no. Of course. Like of smoking course. weed? You had a lot of women you had lined up to? I mean, when you drink and you smoke, mm. I mean, it. alcohol, they say it's, I mean, you, you, you know. So you were no addicted to the secret? Yeah, I was. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I used to hide it. I used to hide that aspect of my life. Or I used to hide that story, but I realized that there's no point hiding it. How did you break out of that? It's grace. It's grace. Even at a point, I had a relapse, you know, there are times that you go back, but then grace still brought me back and I realized, no, this is not my life. This is not my life. So for so far, Did you seek therapy or anything? I did. You did? You I did. Therapy. I did. You know, I went to, recently I went to church sometime and the pastor was praying for somebody and after praying for the person, he said, listen, I'm going to pray for you, but when you are done, I want you to go into therapy. You know, we make it look as if therapy is, is, it's bad. It's bad when you go for therapy. No, no, no. It's, it, it's actually, it's actually, the same way you go to a chiropractor when you have a problem with your spine, or you mm. go to the doctor when you have a problem with, when you have, a mala when you have malaria, you have some so sort of disease. It's the same way these people are also able to at least help you think the right way you're supposed to think. Help, because a lot of us, like I was saying, a lot of us didn't have a good upbringing. Mm. I grew up with just my mom. 
till I got to JSS. Your then dad? I, yes. No, my dad came in. I mean, I knew, I knew him from afar. Okay. But he got closer when I, was, I got to JSS. Hmm. And even then, it took about four years before we actually... Be, and now we're actually cool. We are like the best of friends. But you friend. think it was that part of what affected you? Oh, of course, of course. Broken homes or the, the unusual setup, it actually affects the, the upbringing of, of children. And... It's rather unfortunate that sometimes some of the some of some parents don't have control of some of these situations. You can't really blame them, and it's not their fault. They just don't have control over whatever happens. But it affects children. And if the single parent also maybe is going through some form of depression or maybe is going through some form of hurt, automatically it is transferred onto the, the children, child. and they also feel it. Mm. So, I mean, the most important thing is to identify yourself. Knowing your problem is like 50 percent of the solution right. to your problem right are you I, the only child yes of my mom yes but of my dad i'm the first one of four okay yes okay. Mm. so i realized that listen therapy is not a bad thing and I, honestly i do not regret going into therapy it was good it, it was very good mm. and the good thing is I went to a Christian therapist. All right. So let, me, let me take a break on this note because, you know, the conversation is getting very interesting. I want to know more about Perez because I bet you are at home and you are saying to yourself, my goodness, Perez music? Oh. He went through all of that? Yes, because you, maybe you have a child who is going through something like that. You have a sibling. You have a loved one going through something similar. You are hoping uh, God will help or see the person through. So don't tune out. Uh, Stay tuned because uh, you'll definitely be inspired by this transition. We'll be right back. I'm trying with my gadgets because of Perez, but you speak some deep gun. This is this like an average. No, it's not. It is. No. You know why you the say. The average is Toyota. No, that's. that's <laughs> you know why you say that? Because we don't speak uh, often. Mm. Like now, it's like we speak a lot of Akan. And we okay, so ma, ma, ma wobo. Hey, Wale, okay. I'll strengthen you. I'll strengthen you. And I'll lift you. And I'll lift you. If one could bark, but no evil shall come your see, way. See, see, that, that one is deep. No, if one is, 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 is simple. It's a, simple. If, 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 if one could bark, but no. If one could bark, but Okay. It's deep. No, it's, it's not. It's not deep. All right. I mean, if one is evil, no evil shall come near you. All right. And you're like, you talk a farm. It could cry, but uh -huh. The plans and the devices of the enemy, none of them will come your way. Okay. Oh, that's that's a great tune, and Thank you. I know we're talking about your journey into uh, you know coming into the whole gospel scene, you know where you as as a growing up child, which a lot of young men experience and women experience, especially from broken homes, um, you went a little wayward. Yeah. But then you just got up and decided to go back to church. Yeah. What happened? Um, like I was telling you, I think I had I had hit a brick wall. I hit a wall. Um. I was at the, um, a place where I realized that it's either you go deeper or you come back to your beginning. So I just, I just came back because I realized that life's heavy be some way, you understand? And there are two forces that run this world. It's either you are serving the devil or you're serving God. There's no way you can be in, mm. in between. So the one, one day I told my mom and my mom that I wanted to go to church with them Sunday afternoon. They have this fellowship they go. And when I said it, they were very surprised because this is this guy who never goes to church. So when I said it, they were like, cool. They were very excited. happy, excited. They're supposed to go around five. But around 3.34, I went. I said, are you guys not ready for us to go to the church? She was eating. She, finished, she, pushed, she pushed the food, washed her hand. My auntie stood up and they said, oh, we are ready. Let's go. So even before the church was started, we went, we went, we were there. It was a fellowship at a, a school park. So we were there and we we're praying. And so my very first encounter with the woman of God, she gave me some prophecies. I mean, in my mind, I was like, Charlie, Charlie, this is the normal thing that they do. And she told me that God, God, God has a plan for me and God wants to use me. I was like, ah, me, I didn't, I didn't pay attention. So we went for the, the next week also I went, mm -hmm. but after that church experience, I still went back, I was still doing my own thing. So the next week we went and I had an encounter. Like I had an encounter that I couldn't explain. I have not had that before. And this lady prayed for me. I was having some pains here. I don't know how she knew. I never told her I was having pain. She came and she touched there exactly, like the, the, the exact place and she prayed for me. And then I, I started throwing up and it was blood mixed with flames and some things. 
she told me that God just delivered me from some serious sickness. So I should serve God, I should give my life to God. I'm like, okay. I was really shocked, like, I mean, the things I saw. So I was going to clean it, and she was like, no, I should leave it, she would clean it herself. So she did the cleaning herself, and she prayed for me. Then we went again the next day. And when we were praying, I told God, you know what, if truly you've called me to do your work, there are about five, six ministers here, let them call me and lay their hand on me before we leave here. I just said it in my head. I didn't even pray it, it was in my head. Could you believe that? The woman, like, somebody just came and said, you kneel down. And then she called all the ministers and they prayed for me. The exact prayer I prayed to God about. Wow. So then I got scared. That was when you knew God was definitely Yes, God I got prayed. scared. I'm like, okay, now let me seek God out for myself. And it's been a journey. I mean, I'm not going to say that it was, it was perfection from there on. No, it's been a journey. It's been that's what I want people to understand. When you come to Christ, it's, it's a journey. So, Perez, uh, what have you been doing lately? I know Hewale is on the market. Yeah. How is it doing? It's doing, it's doing good. It's I know doing it's well. doing well. <laughs> I know it's doing well. I've been seeing I mean, on God social media and faithful. everything. Mm. Yeah, God has been faithful with this particular release. I mean, and I, I thank my team members. I thank my producer, Spunkies. He was the one playing the keyboard. Mm -hmm, I was with him mm -hmm. here. I mean, he's the one, the brain behind this. I mean, I used to produce my own songs at first, but then I listened to a message by Apostle Joshua Selman. You know, it's like, listen, you've been doing it on, on, on your own for a while. He was specific. He said, go and get a producer. Mm. Like, if you're a musician, go and get a producer and work with, get somebody who can help you. Mm. But, and I believe God was giving me, was sending me into a different realm when it comes to music or into a different spectrum when it came, when it came to music. And I, I knew I couldn't interpret it properly on my own. And I also believe in teamwork. So I, I hooked up with him and, then and a few people, and it's you. been it's been it's been wonderful. That's great. It's you know, wonderful. you know, we could go on and on with our conversation because it's just interesting to get to know how God does deliver people to His side. Mm -hmm. But then I'm going to end the show with you. I want to have another interview because there's the show that's coming up on Joy Prime. I'm excited about it. You should be a guest on a one day. Mm -hmm. It's called the BPMS, the Bald. Hot belly, muscle, and skinny. You should hey. see and accept of that. It's, it's all men conversation, and eh, oh, wow. Charlie. The things the men talk about. I'm sure I can fit in the P. Uh, the pot belly. Eh? Mm, <laughs> <coming> <laughs> We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be speaking to the presenter of the show. Do stay with us.